Welcome to Calf Academy, your source for calf care education. This module is entitled Rumen Development and Weaning. An overview of this module, we're going to discuss rumen development, the importance of starter and proper feeding of the starter grain, proper feeding and timing of hay feeding, and then the optimal steps to weaning a calf. The cycle of rumen development starts with good starter intake, and I will add starter and water intake. Optimal intake of a good quality starter results in microbial growth and digestion, which results in volatile fatty acid production, which are the end products of digestion, which result in papillae development and absorption for a good functional rumen. Volatile fatty acids that we're concerned about in the development of the developing rumen are acetate, propionate, and butyrate. Butyrate and propionate arrive from the fermentation of starch and sugar. Acetate is generally a product of fiber or cellulose fermentation. Volatile fatty acids have stimulatory effects on papillae or absorptive functional surface development in the rumen. Butyrate, propionate, and acetate all contribute to this. Fermentable carbohydrates, such as cereal grains, are most ideal for rumen, microbial, and papillae development. When looking at proper rumen development, ideal rumen development, rumen size will increase with body size regardless of the diet. However, functional rumen development or papillae development is highly dependent on the diet that the calf is fed. In looking at the rumen of a six-week-old calf that's fed milk and a high-quality grain, note how the papillae are visible, and these are key structures for nutrient absorption. If a six-week-old calf, such as a veal calf, is fed milk only, you can see that the papillae are pale and less developed. Star grain serves two important functions. It's an excellent source of protein, energy, and minerals, as well as vitamins, but it must be digested in the rumen and the intestinal tract. The best digestion occurs after two to three weeks of age. Fermentation of the starter in the rumen leads to rumen development. Starter grain is fermented in the rumen to create volatile fatty acids. Volatile fatty acids have a direct effect on the growth of papillae which are the functional surface of the rumen. Volatile fatty acids will be a major source of energy to the animal after it becomes a ruminant. Good fermentation needs starter grains as well as fresh water. Calf starter. Calves need to eat the starter. It needs to be palatable. It should be at least 18% protein and it should be good quality with limited fines. In addition to a starter, clean free choice water needs to be available as this increases starter intake. When considering hay and its effect on the calf's stomach, hay does provide protein and fiber, but hay does not develop the rumen papillae. Hay will fill up valuable space in the young calf's rumen and reduce starter feed intake. If you look at the rumen of a four-week-old calf fed milk and hay and a 12-week-old calf fed milk and hay, you can see how hay fills up and distends the rumen. The ration helps determine the rumen status. pre wean calves fed starter have dark rumen tissue that includes a greater surface area and vascularization, and they have more developed rumen papillae. If you compare an eight week old calf fed milk and starter to a 12 week old calf fed milk and hay, you can see the difference in, in their rumen. Hay in the calf stomach. Hay does not need to be fed to the calf before eight weeks of age. When hay is introduced one week after grouping, it should be fed at less than half pound per head per day. Hay does have nutrients in it, but they take three weeks to be available to the calf based on rumen fermentation dynamics. To optimize rumen development, paramount attention should be paid to the calf starter. With the calf starter, feed management is key. It needs to be free of fines. It should contain the coccidiostat, decox or bovitec, and the ideal crude protein level should be 18 to 22 percent. In addition to a quality calf starter, it is important that clean, fresh water be available. Water drives starter intake and rumen development. Hay is not necessary until one to two weeks post weaning.
Weaning. Starter intake determines weaning. The calf should be consuming three to five pounds per head per day of quality starter for three consecutive days before it begins weaning. Starter intake may be lower for calves on an accelerated growth program that are fed high levels of liquid. The weaning process should involve switching the calf to one-time daily milk feeding, and that'll spur starter intake. Once the calf is reduced to one time per day milk feeding, their starter intake should double. We can use the NRC to predict starter intake required to maintain the desired body weight gain as the calf grows. At 132 pound body weight and the desired gain of 1.32 pounds per day, starter intake needs to be at least 3.37 pounds per day. A 176 pound calf where you desire a 1.76 pound per day average daily gain requires 4.81 pounds of starter to maintain that gain. Some management tips for weaning calves is that fresh starter should be available to the calves every day. Old starter or old feed should be removed and fed to older calves or dry cows. Start feeding starter with small amounts, less than a quarter pound per head per day. Offer fresh clean water as this will stimulate starter intake. Milk should be cut back to one time a day feeding one week prior to weaning. At the time of weaning, stress should be minimized. Transition pen feeding and management considerations. Calves should be moved to group housing from individual housing about one week after weaning. The ideal is to leave the calf in the hutch for one week after weaning and feed it starter and water. One should increase the group size gradually, starting with groups of eight calves. In the group pens, the calf should be kept on the same starter feed and fed at free choice, as well as free choice water. Hay should not be introduced for at least one week after grouping, and then it should be limit fed to a half to one pound per calf per day. This concludes the room and development and weaning module. Thank you for completing this Calf Academy course. If you have follow-up questions, please contact your Milk Products National Account Manager.